Good morning. What's what's going on, guys? Today is an awesome day. It's an awesome day. Checking in cars. Getting ready to do some training. Today is an awesome day. And I, I want to say a shout out and a thank you to all of the wonderful people who are piling into the corporate toolbox. I just want to say thank you for your faith in me and I appreciate your business. We are getting ready to cook with some gas. As in referencing um, this morning's video, how to build a business in a year. That's going to be exclusive, explicit training in the corporate papers. Also, we're going to have a little fun. It's going to be a little swag. I got a lot of ideals, a lot of things to implement, and I'm excited and I'm energized because I want to create more of me more corporate citizens I don't want it to be fantastical or strange that you can walk into a dealership and drop 120k on the car and walk out with it paid for without financing I say the things I say for a reason this morning posted a receipt I bought this car with my corporate credit card I bought it with the Divi corporate credit card because I started to think, man, I can get some massive points if I start using my credit card. I could get massive cards. So essentially, this is how it works. The Wells Fargo, I get cash back. And probably what I'm going to do, because I got one Wells Fargo credit card, the one that's supposed to unsecure in about two months, that's paid off. So I'm not going to use that one. And the other Wells Fargo, I got like $7,000 available credit because I spent a lot. Um, so what I want to do, since I just made a $21,000 payment to that Wells Fargo credit card, I'm going to let it just sit and marinate for a minute. And then what I'm going to do is pay off the Mac Daddy Auto's credit card. And then I'm going to, um, they have closed the ramp to 285. I got a cop sitting there. Alrighty, I don't know what they're doing. So I gotta go around to get on 285. But what I'm gonna do is start using that Mac Daddy Auto's credit card to buy cars because uh, I get 1.5% cash back. And if I use that credit card, let's say, and this also will go in, and this is corporate game, corporate game, because right now there's a whole bunch of people on YouTube that will tell you how to get uh, a, a credit card, a, a business credit card, but the, 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 the limits are, are garbage. The limits are peanuts, right? So I'm going to teach you because I'm going to give you my plan. I'm going to pay off that Mac Daddy Autos credit card and I'm probably going to be running about 100K a month, which means I'm going to pay it off four times a month. And then I'm going to leave the other credit card for the holding company credit because I got that card, I got the Divi card, and I got the Tobago card. So essentially, I have a specific plan uh, that I'm working on that I want to facilitate, that I want to put into play. And essentially, if I spend 100K a month on this corporate credit card, I'm going to get massive cash back. I'm talking massive. I think 1%. 1% of 25,000 is, let's see, 10% of 25,000 is, hold on a second, 
calculating, I'm calculating. So 10% would be 2,500. So 1% of that would be 250. So I will be getting at 100K a month spend, I would be getting, because it's 1.5% cash back, I will be getting um, about 1,500 a month cash back, which is okay. I was, I, I was tempted to use one of my other credit cards and get miles, but I'm not going anywhere no time soon. But going forward, I am going to probably, let's see, they've got all kinds of stuff going on here. Let's see. All right, so I'm looking at Chattanooga. So as I build out my corporate credit, and once I get the cash flow up, I am probably going to get what the <laughs> all right they got it close where you can't get no 285 I'm like what the hell what the hell I don't know what they're doing but they, they closed it off the other day where you couldn't even get on Roswell Road so I got to take this long way around the long way but here's the plan right now I'm, I'm in the middle of building corporate credit I've been building corporate credit for 10 months and August will be my 11th month and September will be my 12th month of building corporate credit so once I get my corporate credit what I kind of see happening is me getting my American Express Business Platinum back because I can get a bunch of miles with that because essentially, you know, th this is how it goes. Uh, people will tell you that you can get corporate credit and you can. If you have a good FICO score, you can probably get a Chase Inc., um, American Express, um, but you're not gonna get really good limits. That's the thing that they leave out. Uh, you might get a five or $10,000 limit and that that's kinda it. That's it. I have a friend who does a, who has a million dollar year business and he has a Wells Fargo credit card and he only has a $20,000 limit, a business credit card. So essentially people are, will have you gassed up thinking that you can get all of this corporate credit with no cash flow. And my friend, who owns a million dollar bill, he has cash flow. And he only got like, so they're, they're not like just throwing out large credit limits to people with no business. So you, you, I mean, you might have some personal credit cards with a greater limit than your business credit cards. So we're going to be talking about how to build a business in a year. Now, what does that look like? First, you get your corporate structure. We're gonna be working on business credit and we're gonna be working on management and hiring. Management and hiring are gonna be key. Do you know there's like 30 million small businesses in America and 29 million, almost the majority of them are one person businesses? Because they don't know how to hire. They don't know how to manage. So there's gonna be a very strong component to hiring people and let's talk about how to hire people uh, I have folks who want to um, oh I went the wrong way because this is not going to allow me to get on 285 all right you asshole alrighty why are you Oh, they're doing all kind of construction around here. It's wild. It's, it's kind of wild at the moment. But hiring, all right. How to hire someone. Like 
uh, I, you know, a lot of people like to critique me, and uh, someone put up a comment on the video. I love. It's like I thought you said you shouldn't hire nobody into the business able to stand on itself. All right. If I didn't have the repair issue that I have, which is one of the reasons I bought this, this car is not going to have any issues. Um, I would have made. Let's let's go ahead and go to the button. If I didn't have the yard bird issue, the yard bird issue cost me. Five thousand dollars this month. This is people keeping my cars and not paying me and refusing to bring the car back. Because uh, essentially, car comes back, I rent them out real quick. So they cost me five thousand. So if I didn't have the repair problem and I didn't have the um, yard bird problem, both which are being solved as we speak, I would have made twenty-two thousand dollars. I hire one employee, pay him three thousand dollars a month. That's something the business can easily do. And essentially, I'm not planning on hiring anybody until I got an assistant that's already on the payroll. So I can use her and we're, we're gonna start talking about it. I gotta get her tuned up. We, we gotta get the little uniforms and get, get everything. But in three months, I should be making 40,000 a month and that's plenty of money to hire one person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be paying this person $40,000 a month. You know, come on. Come on, man. So there, there's plenty of money because, once again, when people who are trying to check me, they're listening to what I say, they're always looking for some way to try to check me. Who going to check me, boo? And they're, they're not paying attention to the full game because nothing I said in that video goes against anything I said. I said three months in the future because the revenue would be higher. And um, I will be able to easily afford to hire an employee. But once again, hiring. All right, how could I hire someone to do this business when I'm still learning this business? You, you, you feel me? You feel me? Because I, I, a lot of you like, just hire someone. Like, hire them to do what? And also, I gotta be really careful uh, essentially, this person will have access to over three hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory. I got take quick story. Um, rented out uh, the Porsche Cyan to a nice lady. She's not going to sell my car on Craigslist, um, and she did not know how to manipulate the controls and work it. And she just said, "Look, I ain't never been nothing like this. This this is kind of overwhelming." And I, I, you know, a little five minute walk through on how certain controls work and everything. And essentially, the person that I hire, because I'm probably going to hire an older person, not a younger person. And I'm going to tell you why. An older person is going to be settled. I'm probably going to hire someone who's married, either a married man or a married woman with children. Because these folks are going to show up for work because they got to. They're going to show up. They're going to show up and they're going to show, show out. They're going to show up and they're going to show out. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, everybody's driving crazy this morning. So one of the things is this is going to be in the hiring part of the course. We're going to have a whole course. And as I hire people, you'll get to see the interviews and stuff like that. Because I've hired probably in my career 150,000 people. Not 150, like 150, not 150,000. 150. 150 people from uh, the commercial office furniture, hiring installation crews, to hiring employees for upscale garage sale, to hiring employees for Mac Daddy Media, to hiring employees for disruptive asset. So about 150. And essentially, if you want to grow your business, you got to hire people. And this is one of the things that I consistently see in the the YouTube um, ads, you don't have to hire nobody. You don't have to have an email list. You don't have to do none of that real stuff that that the business that runs a business. You don't have to do none of that. And essentially, I'm going to be the anti uh, person to tell you, yeah, you got to do that. Because, oh my God, what the hell have they done? This wasn't here before. I mean, this is kind of blowing my mind. And they got these big old concrete blocks. All right, this is new. 
this they've they've moved the exit <laughs> you gotta be careful with this um so hiring is going to be a critical component to you scaling and you um building a business it's going to be a serious serious component to that and why are all these folks in this lane good lord um so hiring people and setting that up are going to be very very critical to you building a business that doesn't consume you because most small businesses, you know, the average small business owner makes seventy thousand dollars a year because it's them. They're doing everything. Like right now, uh, I'm doing everything, and I have a timetable where that's going to stop because I know for me to grow this business, I'm going to have to hire people. And I'm going to have to hire correctly. We're going to go through the hiring process. We're going to go through all of this. And then management. Management is more important than hiring. And hiring is very important. You hire them, you got to manage them. You got to have SOPs. You've got to have policies. You've got to develop a corporate culture. Because I'm already kind of seeing where Mac Daddy Autos is going. Because Mac Daddy Autos, I'm the only one on hire car with as many BMW. There's like most of the people who have BMWs on there, they'll have one. Or someone will have one Mercedes. I have, let's see, I've got 12 cars with GPSs including the Mercedes, the Cyan, two X5s, one, two, three. I've got nine BMWs. With this one, 10. I have 10 BMWs. And by December, I might have 20. And Mac Daddy's models, this, this is the brand. This is gonna be the corporate culture. I got to hire a designer to create the logo because I want the logo to be lit. And what I'm gonna have is people wear apparel with Mac Daddy Autos on it. They're gonna be branded with my logo. And that's my employees because I see by August having three employees, three full-time employees by August. And there, there's gonna be a lot of work. And what I'm gonna do, and this is part of management, because I have multiple companies, I'm gonna hire people for Mac Daddy Autos but also cross train them. If you ever get the chance, you should go to the BMW plant in Greenville, South Carolina. You should go because it is a great lesson in management and hiring. Essentially, everyone that works in that plant, they don't just do one job. They're trained to do four jobs. So they're trained to work on any line. So they come in and like this line's down or maybe we need people over here. These folks can go over there and work. So what I'm gonna do is train people because you know, let's say I have someone who, because essentially I'm gonna tell them during the interview, it's like you're gonna be doing more than just this job. This is your first job. This is your primary job, but you're gonna have a secondary job. And you're gonna have a, you know, you're probably gonna have like three different jobs. But you, this is your primary job, and like when things are slow, you're gonna be doing this, and you're gonna be doing this. So there's never gonna be a time where you're just gonna be sitting around twiddling your thumbs. You're gonna be busy. How does that sound to you? Because also, one of the things I've learned about hiring is you got to check culture. I, I was having, uh, I was with this Lyft driver the other day. He, was, he would be someone I would hire because he has a wonderful personality. Just a cool dude to be around, uh, hardworking. I would hire him. And once again, personality. Personality. Because 
with Mad Daddy Autos, my employees are going to be a representation of me. So I need to hire friendly people, people, people. Like, I, I'm not going to hire any introverts. I'm not hiring any introverts. Not one. Because I don't need someone who wants to be by themselves, left alone, off to the side, don't want to be around. I don't need those people. They ain't going to work. Uh, this is going to be a, this is very much a people business. So I need people who like people, people who are friendly. And once again, this is part of Code for Culture because now if I had a business where, let's say, I needed programmers, I very much would hire introverts. I would uh, hire a bunch of introverts. What's programming? You sitting in the room coding by yourself. Perfect job for an introvert. So if I had a, a coding company and we were creating software products, I would be hiring introverts all day long. Because that's the because essentially you gotta hire people whose personality organically suit the job. Because you can't train someone to be friendly. If they're an introvert and they're not a people person, you 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 know they can front for a minute, but they would be miserable. So why hire someone like that? You know? Hire someone that likes people. Um, there was another person I, I met would hire him because he's a people person. Um, so hiring and management are going to be key. Hiring, management, and corporate culture are going to be key. Key to scaling. Because I just told you, the average small business owner makes 71000 You want to know why? They don't hire nobody. They don't hire anyone. And they don't manage anyone. And they don't know how. This is what separates, because essentially to get you as a corporate citizen to that 250, you gotta hire people. And once again, um, let's go ahead, let's raise it. 100,000 corporate citizens. And what is a corporate citizen? It's a person who owns a business that generates $250,000 a year revenue. Now, why $250,000? My life changed at $250,000. At $250,000, I'm going to tell you the things you can do. You know $250,000? You can buy a million dollar house. You know what the mortgage is on the million dollar house? $5,000. $5,000 a month. The mortgage on a $2 million house is $10,000 a month. So, at $250,000, you can buy a million dollar house, you can send your kids to private school and you have enough money to play the long wealth game. What do I mean by that? There's the short wealth game, starting a business. Your, your business is an asset. Your business generates money. But let's say you make 250 and you live on 100K. So you pay your taxes. Your taxes are going to be about 60. You know, you do it right. So that's gonna give you 90K to invest, either back in your business or in the real estate. It, it's good, because essentially, uh, I did a video and JT Pocket Watchers commented on it because I, I appreciate that dude. Most of America doesn't have enough money, enough capital to really do anything with, fast. You. You can invest $100,000 a year for seven years and you will not be a millionaire. So how in the hell, me, Kevin, are you going to invest $100 a month and retire in seven years? It, it makes no sense, right? You can, because essentially for you to do fire, you need to be putting about six figures a year away. Six figures or more away to do fire. And essentially, uh, there was a the well-behaved wallet. She's been checking it out. She's 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 been a convert to the savage finance world. What's up, well-behaved wallet? Um, because essentially, she's a reasonable, practical person. She understood that for her to do fire, it was going to take her 17 years. And essentially, that's starting now. 
not including, she thinks she says she's 37, 38. So essentially it's gonna take 34 years because you know I count the time that you went into workforce and then when you exit, all of that counts. So she's become a convert to the savage finance methodology because um, essentially you can, you know, uh, there's a video and they need to react to it because this guy made some excellent points. He was talking about people feel that fire is about mindset and attitude. And he said, that ain't the case. It's about money and math. And that's the, that's the reality because most of America can't do fire because they don't make enough money. Put it in a nutshell. You need a certain amount of money to do fire. Hands down. You you know, this is why people are trying or seduced by options trading and all of this other stuff because they don't have enough money to do it the right way. Like if I, well, I can do fire in two years. <laughs> I could do fire in two years if I wanted to. Uh, essentially throw a whole bunch of money in the stock market and just stop doing the things I'm doing and I can do fire in two years. Why? Because I have an extremely large income. Extremely. So I am a well-seasoned, well-versed financial person. Like if I just went ahead and put a million a year into, you know, actually, let's 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 step back on that. If I put two million a year in investments, that would afford me less money than what I'm already making. I, I've already, I, I have certain appetites. I mean, I drive a Porsche, I drive a BMW. That ain't gonna change in retirement. That's not gonna change in retirement. So, um, what I, I want you guys to understand is luxuries once tasted become necessities. And uh, I'm probably gonna have a few more Porsches before it's all said and done. And Cause they told me, it's like, once you buy one, you get addicted and they're very addictive. And uh, essentially what may happen in three, four years, I may put my Porsche in the rental car fleet. I may put the BMW in the rental car fleet and I get something newer and nicer. I got, the, I got those options, but it ain't happening now. But uh, one of the things that I want you guys to understand is becoming a corporate citizen is very, very doable for you. But here's the thing. You got to have the right mindset. And the right mindset is composed of, we're not going to do this in a few weeks or a few months. Think in terms of years. If you go ahead and say, okay, right now I'm here. I have a job. I have okay credit. Uh, I got a little money in the bank. I got $5,000 in the bank. That's where I'm at today. All right. Know where you are today. Three years in the future, that can be 100% different. Three years in the future. You can do amazing things in three years. And this is why so many people struggle because they're trying to do it in these ridiculously compressed timelines of a few weeks or a few months. If you go ahead and tell yourself, all right, I have a job, I got okay credit, I got $5,000 in the bank. This is where I'm at today. And go ahead and write a goal that in three years, it is very possible for you to make be making $250,000 a year in three years. Very possible. This is something that the average person with the right information, the right mindset, the right training, and the right level of action can achieve. And I want you to sit down and I want you to think, what would your life be like at 250 a year? You know, you know, say you're making 38 right now, and then you go ahead and you start making $222,000 a year more. What would your life look like? Like, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me. My first 200K year, I was able to pay cash for a car. I was able to, actually it was more than 200K, to pay cash for a car. I was able to travel. I was able to eat out anytime I wanted to. And my, because money was coming in so fast, because we, we're gonna be talking about the velocity of money. Because essentially, 
this whole thing about not, you know, one of my things that I, I just despise about the fire me movement is the cheapness, being cheap. Don't get a cup of coffee. Don't do this. Don't do this. This $5 cup of coffee, 10 years in the future, costs you $10,000. That, I'm, I have an abundant mindset. I feel that if you have the right mindset and the right level of action, you can have coffee like, I eat out virtually every day. And it doesn't affect my bank account. It doesn't affect my wealth one way or another. You want to know why? Because it's such a small part. Because this is something else I'm going to teach you guys. You want to go ahead and make more money than you need. You want to be in a position where, let's say, you know, you get to your first year as a corporate citizen, you're making your 250, right? And then you want to scale it up to a million. Here's the trick. You scale it up to a million, but you're still living on the two. Well, actually, you can live on a net of 250, which is 20,000, 21,000 bucks a month. I'm here to tell you, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And essentially, if you're making a million and you're living on 250, that gives you, let's say, million, you do it right, you're gonna pay 200K in taxes. Um, you know, there's a certain structure I will teach you in the corporate papers. And let's say you pay 200K in taxes and you made a million, so that made 800,000, and you're living on 250, that gives you, what, 550000 to invest? You can do fire. You could, I mean, at that level, I mean, look, let's say you did that for five years. Million dollars a year for five years. Um, 200K in taxes. Um, then you took home 800 and you invested 550 for five years. You invested 2.5 million. You could you can create your own real estate portfolio and be debt free. Be debt free. Two point five million dollars in real estate could be generating, let's say, uh, four hundred thirty thousand dollar house, three thousand two four five six twenty thousand dollars a month passive income. So you would be doing like 240 a year passive income off your $2.5 million real estate portfolio. And here's the thing, over time, your monthly income goes up because you get to raise rents. This is what you can do in five years. So. Go ahead and let's go ahead. Year one, become a corporate citizen and you have a 10 year window. You can set yourself up for life in 10 years. And I'm talking about nice, nice. So hopefully you guys are with me. And once again, shout out to all the wonderful people who are jumping in the corporate papers. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna, we're gonna do some amazing stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Below is the pathway to the corporate papers and tonight at 12 a.m the price goes up so go ahead get in and take advantage of it now so with that i will see you guys in the next one